panel system produces more energy than you need, you can get a battery to store it and use it for later. Battery bank comes in handy during blackouts. It's essential for off-grid systems where you rely solely on solar panels since you'll be using stored energy at night and on cloudy days. What kind of battery should you use though? My name is Stuart and today we'll be talking about the different types of batteries for a PV system. The first thing I have to make clear is that we are talking about deep cycle batteries. The opposite would be an automotive or a starting battery, a car battery for example. They may look alike but they have different purposes. An automotive battery gives out a short burst of high current to power the engine. Deep cycle batteries made to provide low current over a long period of time. Most importantly, a deep cycle battery is designed to be deeply discharged and then charged again. Let's talk a little about the properties of batteries that you should look out for. Capacity is how much power a battery can store. Power rating is how much energy it can supply at a time. A battery with high capacity and a low power rating powers only a few devices, but for a long time. A battery with low capacity and a high power rating could run your entire home, but not for long. The lifespan of a battery is often measured in cycles. One cycle is when you discharge the battery and then recharge it back up to 100%. Pay attention to safe depth of discharge, or DOD, which varies with different types of batteries. DOD is a percentage of battery charge that can be safely used. For example, if you discharge a lead acid battery by 80% every time, it'll survive up to 250 cycles. But if you use only 50% of its charge every time and then fill it back up, it'll last for say 750 cycles. Batteries have different efficiency ratings which indicate how much energy will be lost during the transmission process. In our new guide, we explain how you can minimize the expenses when going solar and then maximize your profits from it. You can grab this guide for free. Find the link in the description. There are four most prominent types of batteries for solar systems and two of them have several subtypes. We'll briefly go over them one by one. The first one is lead acid batteries. This is the oldest type of battery that's still around. They're a tested classic and they are relatively inexpensive. You can distinguish these three types of lead acid batteries. The first one is wet cell or flooded batteries. This one has barely changed in the last 160 years. Wet cell batteries went out of fashion but are still used to this day. A battery like this consists of cells filled with electrolyte, water and sulfuric acid. You'll have to check its levels from time to time and add some distilled water. Be careful because sulfuric acid is dangerous for your skin and clothes. The safe depth of discharge of wet cell batteries is around 50 to 60%. That means only about half of its full capacity is safely usable. All the wet cell batteries are afraid of extreme climates. Water can either evaporate in hot areas or freeze when it's cold. Gel batteries are a second subtype of lead acid batteries. Technically, it's a wet cell battery, but a silica additive makes the electrolyte stiff, so it doesn't have the risk of spilling. They are also much better at withstanding extreme temperatures. The problem with gel batteries is their voltage sensitivity. They really don't like being overcharged. Their safe depth of discharge is slightly higher, about 75%. The third subtype are AGM, or absorbed glass mat batteries. They're also known as dry cell because there's no liquid water in them which makes them an AGM battery safe. It isn't as affected by extreme temperatures as a flooded battery. Its DOD is around 80%. Their disadvantage is, again, their vulnerability to overcharging, plus AGM batteries tend to cost twice as much as a good wet cell battery. It's only natural that lead acid batteries get less and less popular. Their depth of discharge is low and they are too fragile. On paper, a lead acid battery can withstand, say, from 750 to 1500 cycles, which is around 4 to 8 years, but it's really easy to kill it off in one year. It often dies because of lack of maintenance or overcharging or extreme temperatures. That's why lithium ion batteries rise to the top and today are a new standard for solar systems. What is better about lithium ion batteries in general that made them so popular? First of all, their depth of discharge is higher. You can easily discharge even the most basic lithium ion batteries by 80 to 90% without any harm to it. They're also more efficient. Lead acid batteries store and transfer about 75 to 85% of energy that they get, whereas the efficiency of lithium ion batteries is at 90% or higher. A lithium ion battery on average occupies 75% less space and weighs 75% less than a comparable lead acid battery. They are also charged faster. It takes about one to two hours to fully charge a lithium ion battery compared to two to four hours for a lead acid battery. Lithium ion batteries last longer and they are less susceptible to extreme temperatures. The only good thing about lead acid batteries in comparison is their lower cost. 
Lithium ion batteries themselves are different. First, there is lithium cobalt oxide or LCO battery. It's the most commonly used in smartphones, tablets, etc. Sometimes LCO batteries are used for solar systems, but not too often because they have a relatively short lifespan. They last for 700 to 1000 cycles. Probably the most popular type of lithium solar battery on the market is lithium nickel manganese cobalt oxide or NMC. It lasts for about 2000 to 2500 cycles. It operates okay at low temperatures and it's among the more affordable lithium ion batteries. The problem is its toxic components which make it harder to recycle. Its direct competitor and probably the best type of battery for a solar system is lithium iron phosphate or LFP battery. Compared to NMC, it is safer and more reliable. It can withstand anywhere from 3000 to 6000 cycles and you can use it for 10 years easily. It's more expensive than an NMC battery, but its value is higher because again it lasts longer. Besides its depth of discharge is higher, up to 100%. The downside of the LFP battery is that it's more vulnerable to cold than NMC. Also its energy density is lower. So if you have NMC and LFP batteries of the same capacity, the NMC battery is going to be smaller. Overall, I would say that if you're just looking for a reliable battery for your home, I would recommend taking an LFP battery. Lead acid and lithium ion batteries are the two most popular types. Now let's say a few words about two lesser known ones. The third type is nickel cadmium batteries. They are robust and withstand extreme temperatures well. They are more expensive than lead acid batteries, but they last longer and have a higher energy capacity. Lithium ion batteries are still smaller though, and these two types are comparable in cost. You often see nickel cadmium batteries in large solar projects where you deal with megawatts of power and you often need to discharge a battery quickly. They are also a go-to choice in harsh conditions. They're probably the best choice for a really cold place. The downside of nickel cadmium batteries is that its cells have high self-discharge rates. Another problem with them is that they are hard to recycle. The fourth type of battery is a flow battery. Well, there's a lot of good things about them. You can discharge flow batteries fully and they can stay empty for decades. A flow battery has a good lifespan around 4,000 cycles. They don't need any maintenance and their self-discharge rate is only 0.15% a month. They can store large amounts of power which makes them good for off-grid systems. The downside of flow batteries is they have a high upfront cost and lower energy density. Thus, they are very large. Let me sum this up. For a long time, lead acid batteries were a standard choice and they are still commonly used. They're inexpensive but they need maintenance. They're fragile and they don't last that long. Lithium ion batteries are the most popular option today. Usually you'll be choosing between NMC and LFP batteries. LFP is more expensive, but it lasts longer. If you have a large installation and need a high discharge rate, then it's probably the nickel cadmium battery that you're looking for. Finally, consider a flow battery if you want a maintenance free battery that'll last for years, even if you forget about it. It's expensive and needs a lot of space though. So that's it. Those are the four types of batteries that I've most commonly seen in solar installations. There are more, but I left out some of the types that are too specific. Let me know if I missed anything though. Also, write in the comments below if you like the video or not, and what subject that we should talk about next. Check out our social medias and magazine. We put out all kinds of content about solar power and green energy. I'm Stuart, and I'll see you next time.